All right, 23, we have two high schools that have a similar number of students in parking lots, a similar size. The safety officers at both schools want to investigate whether there is an average difference in number of cars parked per day in the student parking lots for the school year. A random sample of 15 school days will be selected. For each selected day, the number of cars parked in the student parking lots will be counted at both schools and a difference will be recorded. Assuming all conditions for the inference method are met, which of the following is the appropriate test for the investigation? Okay, so it looks like we're, so we're collecting, uh, we're, we're comparing uh, means. So sample means, we're gonna compare. And we, we're picking a random sample of 15 days. But uh, with, for each day, you have uh, two, two um, data points. The number of cars parked in at, at one school and another school. So, so um, you're you're so you have you have a matched pair. Each pair each day you have a pair of cars that you're using to calculate the difference. Um, so let me kind of like do an idea. Let me do an uh, an, an example like um, let's say um. Let's pick like parking lot A, parking lot B, and then you have like, you know, data, data point one for each. But then you're recording the differences. Like, um, let's say X1 minus Y1 or something like that. So the, each of these are pairs each day, like you could say day. Um, you know, day one, you, day two, day three, you're collect, for each each day, you're, for the 15 days, you're, collect, you're counting the number of cars at each parking lot, then comparing the differences. Um, but you're, but these are the matched pairs. Um, so then it would be a C. I feel like I was made that seem a lot more confusing than it was. I don't know, sometimes, I know my students sometimes made a visual because they think of matched pairs like it always has to be people. No, it doesn't always have to be people. It just has to be two similar, um, you know, individuals, but it doesn't have to be people per se. It could be like, you know, cars, whatever, um, animals. All right, moving on, 24. The histogram shows the distribution of heights and in inches of 100 adult men. Based on the histogram, which is the closest to the interquartile range in, in inches of the distribution. Remember the interquartile range, so from the 25th percentile, to the 75th percentile. So since there's 100 adult men, we wanna find where the 25th man would be because that'll be the first 25% or Q1. So Q1 would be at the 25th guy, so let's just count. One, two, four, five, six, nine, 13, 18, 24, So then um, the 24th, this, so up to here, that's the 24th. So 25th, so the 25th guy lies in here somewhere. Q1 would be in there somewhere. And then let's look at the 75th person or let's count backwards. So going from here, 25 back, one, two, four, six, nine, 14, 20, and 28. So here's the 20th. So the 20 to 28 lies in here. So then the 20, so, the, so then, the, then the Q3 lies in there somewhere. So going from this interval to this interval, somewhere in like, so like around 66 to 71. So that's about a, a distance of five. <clears throat> and so the answer will be B. And just so you know, you can't find the exact answer per se. Like, um, and that's not what they're gonna, that's not what they, that's, and they don't expect that. So they won't have answers that are very close. They really just wanna see if you get this general idea. So just make sure you um, understand that, you know, that um, percentile idea when you were talking about interquartile range and Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 and all that. 
right, 25. A state study on labor reported that one third of full-time teachers in the state also work part-time at another job. The average number of hours worked per week at the part-time job was 13. After an increase in teachers' salaries, well, I hope I would like to get that. A uh, random sample of 400 teachers who worked part-time at another job was selected. Um, the average number of hours worked per week at the part-time job for the teachers in the sample was 12.5 with standard deviation, 6.5 hours. Is there convincing statistical evidence that at the level of alpha equals 0.05, that the average number of hours worked per week at part-time jobs decreased after the salary increase. Okay, so we're basically gonna do a significance test um, comparing means. So we have data here, like we have um, our original mean, our, uh, the original, um, the original sample, or like not original sample, but the, the, the original study had the, um, a mean of 13. And when they took a sample of, so in the, in the next study, a sample of 400 and find a, found a, a sample mean of 12.5 and a sample standard deviation of 6.5. So again, become very comfortable with your calculator. You can actually just run a significance test in here. Go to stat, whoa, go to stat, test. And all we simply need to do is a t-test because it's just one sample a year. And that's figure out. And we're gonna highlight statistics. I already, I just did it, so it's already filled in. But you're gonna fill in your null hypothesis mean, or your population mean, be 13. Because you want to you want to test against that to see if the sample mean um, has strong enough evidence to say it's also that it could also be 13, or that or I mean in this case we want to find if there's significant evidence that the mean um, decreased. So the sample mean was 12.5, the sample standard deviation of 6.5, sample size 400n, and our test highlights less than. Because you again, we're looking at decreased. Our null, our, 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 our like null hypothesis will be that mu is 13. The alternative will be that mu is less than 13. And do let's go to calculate, and it'll tell us it. We get a p-value of 0.06. So we don't have significant statistically significant evidence to say that it decreased because our p-value is greater than our alpha level 0.05. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the answer would simply, it looks like it's just gonna be the first one, it'll be A, because it's, the p-value is greater than 0.05. So we, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's it for that one. Hope that helps.